Hello again and welcome to another Beyond All Reason video. In today's video we're going to go over radars, radar jammers and cloaking. Now to get started when we select an engineer, it could be tech 1 or tech 2, you have the radar building. So as we can see here this is the tech 2 radar and in tech 1 engineers this is the tech 1 radar. Now when we select the radar itself we'll see a very wide area in which will be covered by the radar by the big outer green circle now radars in bar are line of sight so unlike games like supreme commander where they just can see anything in the circle bar radars have to have line of sight with the target now we're going to demonstrate this by building this radar just behind this rock and as we can see here the gray area here will mean that anything behind the rock we will not see so as we go and build this radar now, we'll see that a bunch of things have been detected. As we select, there is a little bit of overlap and we can see these units just to the south here and then a few others. Now, you also have what's called true sight, which is where there is a slight difference here. There's a very slight gray line here where that's the actual vision provided by the radar. As we can see here, we can physically see these pawns. Now, to get around line of sight issues, you will build a radar generally on the highest part. So if we build a radar up here, instead, you will notice that we're now able to see a lot more things. This now takes us on to radar jamming and cloaking so as we can see here this is a bunch of units that have been built by fred um, that have the ability to cloak and you will see that whilst they're uncloaked they are visible they are visible on radar and we can see them now once they cloak you can see that they are instantly no longer visible however you will notice that the commander the sharpshooter sniper bot and this amphibious crawling bomb are still technically there. Now, the difference is these units have cloak. They also have stealth and or radar jamming. Like the proximity cameras that we see here and the stealth bots also have jamming on them as well. What this means is when these units cloak, they are completely invisible and are no longer on radar. As we see now, as they cloak, they just completely disappear and they're not there at all. One solution to that is the intrusion countermeasure system. Now, both Arm and Core have these at Tech 2 and they will look slightly different, but they do the same job. When you select them, you'll see this wide area here that it covers. So if we place this down, and now that this is active, once those units move a little bit, we can now see that we are getting areas where it's saying there are units there. Now this only comes up while those units are moving. Once those units stop moving, they completely disappear. So this doesn't give you a direct target to fire on, but tells you roughly in the area that they are in. Another way of decloaking units is through getting too close to them. Each stealthy unit has a small area around it where if you get too close, they will decloak the unit. So we see now that we move close in here and there we go. See, we spot this target here, but then as soon as we move away, it recloaks. So you need to be paying attention when you're trying to decloak units to, as to where they are. Okay, now the next thing. Radar jamming. Now, there are multiple ways to jam. Uh, you can use the radar towers, as we, radar jammer towers, as we see here from this Castro. And you can also build bots at Tech 2 that also have radar jamming. And what radar jamming does is it removes these dots from the map. So as we see Fred turning on the radar jammers here, we will now see that those units that we could see because of the cloak are no longer visible. That includes the stuff that were outside of our line of sight. So if Fred turns off the jammers again, you'll see all those things come back into existence. Now, there are some units 
that have jamming built into them by default. As we look to the south here by these pawns, we have radar coverage on this area, but there is a unit here that we cannot see. And as Fred walks this unit into shot, we will then be able to see it. Stealth there we go. Detected. Now this unit, the commando itself, has jamming in a small area around it and also has cloak. Now if Fred moves this commando with these pawns out of our vision, we should also then not be able to see them. And there we go. We can now no longer see those units at all. Except stealth for this unit stealth detected. units detected because he's cloaked it and we're in range of the counter intrusion. Now, there is a group of five pawns there with that commando that we can now no longer see, even though it's inside radar vision. So, radar jamming is very important to be aware of. Now, what can you do to remove radar or to remove jammers? Now, there is one building that is specific for that purpose, and that is the Juno. This anti-radar jammer minefield and scout spam weapon is a missile launcher that only does damage to radars, jammers, minefields and scouts. So we click attack. This Juno itself has unlimited vision, so you do not need to worry about it having enough vision. And as we fire it off towards Fred, as Fred puts his radar jammers on, And we see we cannot see those units anymore. And as the Juno lands and destroys them, we are now able to see everything again. Now it leaves a small like electric field after it explodes, which means you can no longer build anything in that area for a short period of time. It's not very long at all. Now bear in mind that the Juno itself also does basically no damage to anything else other than those specific things. Now, finally, Radar Wobble. Now we, we can see that these units at the back here, especially if we zoom in, move around a lot. However, they are stationary. They are These units aren't actually moving like this. Now this is called Radar Wobble. What this means is that when you are trying to attack these units in radar, uh, with something that's high accuracy, like a sniper bot, your sniper bot has a high chance of missing. So to get around this, you need to build a pinpointer. Now, both teams have this. It's not necessarily called the same, but as for core here, it's called a pinpointer. For each one of these you build, it's going. your radar wobble is going to be decreased. As we see here, we've built one, and we can already see that that has substantially reduced the wobble. Okay, and we build our second one. And again, there you see it instantly snap and move position and the wobble is a lot less. After building three of these, the return on them is very little. So at most, you only ever need to build three. And there we go. So now this radar wobble is barely moving at all. And for sniper bots or something like that, we'll easily be able to hit their target. Now you also want these for things like your basilisks, your long range plasma cannons. It will help substantially for those to be able to hit targets that it only has on radar. Pinpointers and these targeting facilities work on a team-wide basis. You only ever need to build them once across your team. So once your team has three of these, you do not need to build any more. And that's it for this Beyond All Reason video. It's a very quick one to just go through radar. Any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. Uh, and that's it. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.